Hello everyone. Today I am going to solve the problem which is based on finite elements method. So in the finite element method, we have so many different elements. Like it may be a bar element, or it may be a beam element, it may be a truss element, or the heat conduction problem. Okay. So all these which are related to the and one methodology, one basic methodology. Once you come to know about that methodology, then you can solve. any type of elements in the finite elements method okay so we have the question here it's based on a bar element okay there is an stepped bar having a different cross sectional area for both the sections okay so one end it is an fixed and another end is free here and the length of the both the elements are different so this will be the l1 and this is l2 and the area for section 1 so let us take this in section 1 and this will be the section 2 so we have two sections and with having a different length and with the with different cross sectional area and the load is applied at the end of the bar so at the free end the load is applied at a 5 kN is applied along the axis of the shaft means it is an a axle tensile load is applied and the value of e is given the e is indicates the modulus of elasticity or it is also called angst modulus okay so in this type of problem we can solve by using and fall penalty method or it is also called uh, gas elimination method okay so here what are the first steps you have to so by using this method so first thing you have to discretize the element into an line diagram discretize is nothing but to get the meshing of that element so the entire element to be projected in a line diagram that is the first position after that just keep the nodes one node and two node where the cross section is changed and three node where the load is applied or at the end of the another section so we have three nodes 1 2 3 so i will write 1 2 and 3 similarly number of elements to be taken in the bracket in a circle keep the number of elements so we have two elements element 1 and element 2 and the number of nodes are 1 2 3 so this is called as discretizing the element write down discretizing the element okay once it is discretized again we will go for applying the boundary condition the boundary condition at the one it will be u1 u1 is nothing but the deformation when you apply the load at the end of the bar so there will be a deformation at the fixed end there will be deformation at the uh, cross section changed and deformation will be the node 3 okay so that is u1 u2 will be at node 2 and u3 at node 3 similarly the force it will be taken f1 f2 and f3 means the force at 1 and force at 2 force at 3 okay generally we don't have the force at the element 1 and force at node 2 and force at 3 we have the load that is 5 kN okay so this 5 kN i will write in newton form 5 into 10 power of 3 newton and also the angst modulus see all the values is in millimeter 400 or 300 and area is also in millimeter so we will convert all the units in the millimeter so i will write 70 into 10 power of 3 newton per millimeter square if you can write where giga pascal is equal to 10 power of 3 mega pascal So seventy into ten power of three mega pascal. So one mega pascal is you can write newton per millimeter square. Okay. So once you discretize, this is the first step. So after that, you need to calculate what is the stiffness matrix for each element. So stiffness matrix for a bar element we have derived where k is equal to a e by l. The bracket one minus one minus one one. so this is a general formula for an stepped bar okay or a bar element 
a by l 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 okay if you are considering for the element 1 to calculate the stiffness matrix for element 1 that is k1 I will write k1 is equal to a1 e1 by l1 so a1 indicates the cross sectional area of element 1 e1 the material property for the element 1 and length for the element 1 okay so now we don't have the value of e1 they have commonly given as e it means that the material for the both the element it will be a common material okay whatever the type of material it may be steel or anything but it is in common so i can write where e1 is equal to e2 is equal to e means both the value will be same okay so just write down the cross sectional area that is 1200 into n modulus 70 into 10 power of 3 divided by the length of the element that is 300 in the bracket again I will write 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 so this is stiffness matrix for the element 1 ok now after that for the matrix 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 I will write the deformation what are the deformation for the element 1 so we have two deformation we start with u1 and end with u2 so at the row write down u1 and u2 and also similarly in the column u1 u2 so let us keep as as it is then we will go for calculating k2 value k2 is nothing but stiffness matrix for the element 2 so it will be again a2 e2 by l2 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 ok so here it is 900 into 70 into 10 power of 3 divided by 400 ok and after that 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 so the deformations at element 2 what are the deformation at element 2 so it start from here and end with here means u2 u3 will be the deformation for the element 3 ok now you just calculate what will be the value at here at uh, element 1 and for the element 2 so for the element 1 we will get 2.8 2.8 into 10 power of 5 and for the element 2 the outside value a e by l will get 1.57 into 10 power of 5 so this value you are going to obtain ok so once you obtain the value of k1 and k2 we will go for calculating the global stiffness matrix global stiffness what is this global stiffness matrix to adding the number of elements so we are having two elements only so we will add two elements so where k it is called k1 plus k2 if you have more number of elements just you add number of the elements ok so where k is equal to k1 plus k2 sum of all the element matrix ok now what is the value of k that is 2.8 so we will take 2.8 we will keep 2.8 inside so 10 power of 5 2.8 minus 2.8 minus 2.8 and 2.8 just I have taken 2.8 inside the matrix so I will write the deformation at the outside the matrix similarly 10 power of 5 to be outside and inside it will be 1.57 minus 1.57 minus 1.57 1.57 and the deformation it will be u2 and u3 here it will u2 and u3 ok so after that now you have to add this two matrix with applying the method of global stiffness matrix adding the matrices so the common term at both the elements should be a common make sure that it should be a common element so I have made it 10 power of 5 and make it 3 into 3 matrix why 3 into 3 matrix because we have the 3 nodes so there will be 3 into 3 matrix ok so u1 u2 u3 write down in the column u1 u2 u3 write down in the sorry column 
column and row you write down after that how to add these two matrices okay so you have to look for the deformation u1 and u1 so we in the row 1 u1 column 1 u1 will be there so here what is the value of u1 you will get so u1 u1 that is 2.8 there is no u1 at the matrix 2 so you can just consider this one so 2.8 will be the answer okay so you have to simultaneously look for all the matrices it may be k1 k2 k3 now similarly u1 u2 so u1 u2 it is minus 2.8 okay but we don't have u1 u3 we have u1 but it is not interlinked with the u3 so it will be a zero similarly u2 u1 that is 2.8 u2 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 that is 2.8 this value plus another u2 u2 plus 1.57 okay both are added here from the element 1 from the element 2 similarly u2 u3 so u2 u3 it is minus 1.57 u1 u3 u1 0 u3 u2 u3 u2 minus 1.57 u3 u3 so this value 1.57 so this method is called global stiffness matrix adding all the matrices so you may get here 2.8 so 1.57 so 7 3 4.37 so 4.37 you will get at the 2 2 value ok so this is called k after this we have to calculate what is the load vector fourth one so load vector it is called as f f is equal to f1 f2 f3 f1 f2 f3 and also the displacement vector u is equal to how many displacement u1 u2 u3 so there are three displacement and three forces are acted for the given problem after that we have the stiffness matrix equation that is k u is equal to f this equation we call as stiffness matrix equation k u f okay So, we will write the value of k k value 10 power of 5 in the bracket 2.8 minus 2.8 0 2.8 4.37 minus 1.57 so 0 minus 1.57 1.57 and the value of displacement u1 u2 and u3 is equal to f1 f2 f3 so f1 value f2 value and f3 once you made the formation of the stiffness equation then we will apply the boundary question the next step it will be applying boundary conditions Okay, so what are the boundary condition? Boundary condition it is nothing but what are the input we are substituting in the given problem. So what are the here we have the fixed end and another end it will be free. It means wherever there is a fixed end that will take as zero. Means for the this end u1 will be zero because it is fixed. Okay, if it is fixed you can directly take. Suppose here fixed means the u3 is also be 0 ok so u1 is equal to 0 and also the force we have the force at node 3 it means we have the boundary condition at f3 that is 5 into 10 power of 3 newton ok so we have 10 power of 5 outside and here it is 10 power of 3 means 5 0.05 into 10 power of 5 so this you can write 0.05 into 10 power of 5 newton so now these two will get cancelled 10 power of 5 so after that applying the boundary condition the next step 
will apply the boundary condition that is u1 is equal to 0 and also the value of f3 it is not f3 f3 that is 0 0.05 okay so this is after applying the boundary condition we will go for elimination method In the elimination method, the first row because it's zero, there is a first row and the first column that will get cancelled. And also, we don't have zero in the force as well as in the displacement. So we will get two into two matrix. So that is value is four point three seven minus one point five seven minus one point five seven one point five seven into the displacement u2 u3 is equal to f2 and 0 0.05 it means the f2 value will be 0 here ok so now by applying the matrix knowledge we will calculate the value of u2 and u3 so just multiply 4.37 u2 minus 1.57 u3 is equal to 0 again minus 1.57 u2 plus 1.57 u3 is equal to 0 0.05 so you will get the two equation by applying the equation you will get the value of u2 and u3 so u2 value will be 0 0.017 and 0 0.049 in millimeter so this is the value of nodal displacement. Okay. Thank you for watching.